Hi, how's it going? Paul Catalina, 365 Sports here for Factor. They came to me a couple weeks ago, sent me these fantastic meals, fresh, never frozen meals. I absolutely loved every single thing they sent to me. If you are too busy to stick to a meal plan or it's getting crazy, it's football season around here, Factor is the way to go. Ready in two minutes out of the microwave. I got the Gourmet Plus option, which has stuff like this Chipotle rub pork chop, Indian butter chicken, this fantastic turkey chili with zucchini. So many great meals. You can refresh your healthy eating habits without missing a beat. And you can choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packed dietitian approved meals ready to eat in two minutes. And right now you can head to factor 75.com and click the link below and use 365 sports 50 to get 50% off your first factor box. So once again, head to factor 75.com use promo code 365 sports 50 50% off your first factor box, factor.com, factor75.com, 365 Sports 50. And here we go with Pete Famel, sources the potential additions of Calvin Stanford at SMU to the ACC are again under serious consideration by the ACC. A small group of presidents met Wednesday morning to discuss financial models that would come with the additions. Yes, so... This is clearly the group that is pro. They've got to get one of NC State, North Carolina, Florida State, or Clemson to flip. And according to Pete Thamel, those models are expected to include significant financial concessions from the schools that will be added. Uh, more meetings are expected this week. They just need the one vote. Uh, a realistic timeline for decision about one week. And there's expected to be a pool of money created from these additions. The ACC presidents are discussing how that money would be split. The mechanics of that are still to be worked out, including a performance pool for success, success initiatives. And the concessions expected from SMU include a willingness to take no broadcast media revenue for the first seven years they're in the league. Stanford and Cal would both receive the same share, which will both be reduced, but different in form than SMU's. So that is the proposal right, they're so working on. They already on have the equal, or they already have the performance base. They, they've, they've discussed that before, so that's not new. How much money pro rata does a group of five school like SMU bring to the table? That, is it the same as the Pac-12 with both the uh, Power Five schools and Cal and Stanford? I would assume not because that wasn't the deal that ESPN made with anybody else. So I don't think they would give whatever the, you know, and, and don't get me to lying about what their base number is because I've, you know, I, I think they're third technically, but, you know, their distribution, you know, whatever is going to come out in the next couple of years with everybody. So I, um, but right. yeah, I did. But are they going to cave to... Clemson and Florida State in particular in North Carolina and say, okay, well, you guys can have the lion's share of this money and then the rest will go in a pool for us. And does that even make them close to happy at all? And do you even want to do that if they're just going to continue to hold you hostage? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, interesting to see that this is uh, you know gaining some momentum because it was very quiet. I mean, there were a little chirping here and there, but nothing, you know, of great significance because it sounded like, if anything, it was – uh, it's something that didn't have a lot of legs to it necessarily, but now it it, it does seem like it's uh, picking back up, and there is you know uh, a timeline and an actual decision that could be uh, you know coming in the next few days, according to Thamel, you know within the week, uh, as he said. So uh, this SMU thing is just crazy to me. I mean, to give up seven years of the money you'd otherwise be earning because you are so intense and in some ways desperate. I mean, let's call it what it is, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in this case because if you land a spot in the ACC you won uh, if it's not going to affect you financially all that much which clearly they feel like they can go seven years and be fine um, and you know it's not like zero dollars would be coming in it's just you know not going to be significantly going up you're you're paying out but um, you know they also realize what that spot means and that's uh, invaluable compared to the TV money or to, you know to the spot that they're currently in so I totally get the desperation but man that is one of the great desperate please ploys of all time to try to get into one of the the big conferences and you know what it might work out for them in the end and if it does then that's all that matters but that's that's a long time without you know uh wanting to take in that money and uh, they've obviously given it a lot of thought they've uh, really tried for quite a while to find themselves this spot so um 
they're knocking on the door. I mean, that's what they're at least doing. And then for Cal Stanford, I mean, obviously they're probably more of the the national story because uh, they're they're larger schools, and uh, you know that's been kind of the focal point since the the uh, Pac-12 you know started to hemorrhage. Um, they need to like, land somewhere. And as you're going to point out with Jack Swarbrick, I mean, he talked. We're trying to help Cal and Stanford find a landing spot. So that's that's a project that you know more hands than even their own are are involved in apparently. Um, so, yeah, it's just natural that they're going to find a spot. The ACC seems to be the only thing that really makes sense. Besides that, it's create your own thing or, or try to, you know, recreate the pack to some extent. So um, I get why this is one of the angles. Uh, I still don't quite love it from an ACC point of view. I mean, I guess there's the difference between the conference and the fans. Like, from the conference standpoint, you've got to do whatever you possibly can to make Florida State and the like happy and if that's just a couple million dollars extra by bringing in these schools and that's enough to get Florida State to quiet down for a while or Clemson, then that's a win. So that makes sense. Um, from a fan standpoint, don't love it. I mean, I just I don't know how you're excited about that if you're you know, a Virginia fan or a North Carolina fan about the potential. Maybe you are. Maybe the West Coast opening up is a, is a grand old idea to some people. But, yeah, there's still a lot of moving parts here, clearly. But the, the skeleton frame is, is in place, and you can see how it could kind of work. And if it does, that'd be uh, quite, the, uh, quite the sequence of events by the ACC and these Pac-12 leftovers. I can see what SMU wants to do. They want to be a power, a power of a Power 5 conference and willing – if, in fact, that's the number, and also, and Pete Thamel's really good at what he does, but to not take any revenue for seven years when the revenue in the ACC is in the upper 20s, lower 30s, similar to the Big 12, I know there's a, a give or take $5 million that goes up as it goes on, and for them, for a long, long time. And I know that they have people who can write pretty much every check they want, but I still, I get why they're wanting to do this, but that is still giving up what could be $150 million or $200 million over a period of seven years. Cal Stanford, they have huge money. Uh, they'll be, let's say they get what the American schools got, plus a little bit more, which was 18 or $19 million this year. Well, I mean, they were going to be fine with the Pac-12 deal. Yeah. So, they're, yeah. I mean, like they were like scraping for every dollar right. like they had to make and get the greediest deal possible. So, yeah, I, I don't think that that – is that big a deal to the, to them either? And SMU, like I said, they've clearly been they're, – they're, they're willing to do whatever it takes to get into a, a quote-unquote power conference. I mean, that's very clear. So, yeah, um, right. you can see it from all three angles. So why would – and I, I know the answer, but it's, let's discuss it. Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, NC State have said no. Is this enough to make any one of them change their mind? And secondly – is there really that much money being added with the prorata of Cal and Stanford? I've asked that to spread out over what, just four schools or eight schools or everybody or some get more? Well, that's what they're talking and, about. <laughs> and on top of that, why would the other schools in the ACC agree to this? Yeah, here's, here's is that a fair question? Yeah, so if you're talking about, let's just put the number at a $30 million gap which is what you heard, 30 to $35 million gap. If you go back and listen to the Board of Trustees meeting at Florida State, that's kind of the number that, that kept popping up. So 30 to $35 million gap when you wake up in the morning those days. Okay, so, all right, so if every school is supposed to get $30 million a year and you add some new schools and then you take money away from them, and then SMU's is a little lower for those seven years, let's say SMU gets $20 million. So you would have to take all that money every year and just give it to the schools that voted no, which then, other than keeping your conference alive, what does that do for Wake Forest and BC and Syracuse and Pitt and, and the others? Nothing. I mean, other than, again, keeping the conference alive, and you can still make the TV money that you're making now consistently without that getting separated, but... How much of that money is enough to close the gap to keep Florida State, who's loud and angry, quiet and content, and Clemson, who's quiet and angry about it, content? From, K from Alex Raya, a uh, Cal fan, ACC needs money, and they are trapped in the grant of rights for several more years. They can only expand at this particular point. 
Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it makes sense when you look at it. It just doesn't make the greatest sense in the world, like every part of it, but it does make sense. I mean, it makes sense from SMU's standpoint. It makes sense from Cal and Stanford's standpoint. It makes sense from the ACC standpoint because they also can't just go by what Florida State dictates all the time. Yeah. They can't just sit on their hands and go, well, Florida State's going to be unhappy. We can't do that. It's like, no, you got to still do what's best for you. And look, if these teams are planning on leaving anyways, you might as well have some new teams that you brought into the fold to offset that, right? So, yeah, it it's – you know, a situation where you're kind of, you know, maybe damned if you do, damned if you don't in some ways, but it, it does make sense because, hey, if we're not going to make them happy now, and we're not going to make them happy five years from now, we might as well do what's going to better us overall in the long run, and that's going to have Dallas and the Bay Area and these pro rata teams coming in and at least adding something to the pie. So, um, yeah, it's it's still a situation that there's a lot of details that need to be ironed out. I think that's pretty clear from Thamel's, you know, reporting is these are discussions, they're still – you know, a lot of the the T's and I's that need to be crossed and dotted and, you know, a lot of other things figured out. But on the surface, um, even though it's a a mutant marriage in some ways because the idea of Duke going to play Stanford in basketball during the weeknight is probably not one that, you know, Blue Devils fans or vice versa are really in love with. But, you know, at least initially it'd be fun. Hey, we're going to play Cameron Indoor for, you know, you can kind of deal with it initially if it means that you're surviving. And, And that's what all these teams are our programs are looking to do. And in this scenario, um, SMU's better. Cal and Stanford are better. Uh, the ACC's better. They're making more money. And the only issue you really have is, yes, there's more headaches with travel, but you can figure that out after the fact because all you're trying to do right now is just stabilize everything. And then that leaves, really, the thing that's already going on anyways, which is Florida State or Clemson or you know, whoever else deciding to complain about their situation, which, again, those are some of the details to be worked out. Maybe Florida State isn't barking as loud when you ensure that, hey, we're going to give you this much extra money from this, and also you feel pretty confident in your football team or your basketball team. If you guys are good, you also get this extra money, and that all adds up to this, and this is why okay. you're better off. So, you know, I don't. it doesn't answer, though, how you close a $35, $40 million gap. That's the thing that nobody has an answer to, yeah. but it's better than nothing. Kurt Green, SMU doesn't need the revenue. They only lose 7 to $8 million a year, the current revenue they have, and they'll make that back, and then some with ticket revenue, NIL boost, donations, applications, visibility, and also merchandise. The SMU enrollment is not going to go up too much. They, they kind of like it where it is. Doesn't mean it won't go up, how much that adds to it. NIL, I can see that. Donations for facilities, I can see that. They've done a lot of that already. But as far as um, ticket revenue, uh, it's, a, it's a really beautiful stadium. I've been in it before. But it's not going to add another twenty five or 30,000 people in, into the seats. If it happens for SMU, I know some, oh, my God, don't. I'm happy for them if it works. And then for anyone else who can find the life wrap, whether it's the ACC or elsewhere, whether it's Cal or Stanford, if it works. And for basketball, men's basketball, uh, in, in, in football, those are charter flights anyway. It's the Olympic sports, of course, and you wonder how much that's going to be tied in well, to the ACC. I, I do think that the ACC might be the one who has to trailblaze in, hey, let's um, – do that stuff regionally? Yeah, no, and, they, they might. And, yeah. and everyone else might eventually do that anyway, so why uh, not? Uh, um, although, this does, you read all these tweets and then all this news, and it does maybe put some context as to why the North Carolina soccer coach backed off yeah. of some of the stuff he said. Yeah. We're, we're, re- we're going to read that in just a second. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, and Swarbrick had interesting comments, too, that were kind of weird, really, when I was, I was listening back to him because it's like the guy – is one of the main figures in what all's going on and talking about how it's just, it's kind of well, weird the way college officials are, you know, bemoaning what's going on and yet they're all directly involved in what's going on and help create what's going on. But I wanted to say on SME, like they're never, yeah, they're never going to want to get too big, but certainly they, they, I would imagine they'd see a bump in enrollment just from the East coast and, uh, and also the extra added potential West coast wise. I mean, I think they already get some California kids, Arizona and such, but you know, certainly having a couple Bay area schools could, tick that up, but they're going to want to remain SMU and and never want to explode, you know, enrollment wise. But yeah, they'd see an uptick in probably everything. Um, And so, you know, they've, they've made their position clear and this looks like it is their chance uh, of all chances. You know, I don't know about Cal Stanford, what other pivots they may have, uh, but for SMU, this certainly does feel like it's your last opportunity to, to get daylight. I just think when it comes to the four schools, I mean, what does that do to their their relationship with each other, UNC, NC State, Clemson, and Florida State, if one of them is the defector. And if they're not really in 
with this idea, and yet one of them balks and then crosses over to the, the picket line, so to speak, and allows this, you just wonder what kind of damage that would do. And that would be obviously a next chapter here because first they need to welcome in these schools, but it would take one of those four, at least one, backing off. And, um, you know, they seem pretty gridlocked right now. They seem pretty tight, but just one, yeah. you know, I'm sure there's a lot of whispering in ears right now. My my assumption would be that, and this is not, I don't know the politics of, of NC State and North Carolina, but I would assume that right now they're doing the Arizona Arizona State thing where they are mm-hmm. they are in lockstep together until they don't have to be, you know, which would come for North Carolina before it came for North Carolina State. See, that's the, that's the thing is North Carolina can have North Carolina State and they can be buddy buddy and hugging each other, but the minute that that phone rings and it, you know. Hello, this is North Carolina. Hi, this is a bigger conference with more money. They're like, hey, um, hold on. we got to make a quick call to NC State and tell them we're busy on Saturday. Let's get <laughs> yeah. the quote from Swarbrick that 